key on committing the only. Um, the UK my is plays a very important part, not just in number one, but in number two specifically, because of the yoga game, the soccer top. Um, so too many people where they they do the punch and then they step all down. They do the, the soccer top and they're too close. If it, if it wasn't for the person moving away, then they wouldn't actually be able to do a, a soccer top. So it's important that you think about your mind. Yeah. Um, the attack would be to the kidney. Try not to aim for the kidney, aim slightly higher because if you keep on hitting the kidney you'll end up uh, having blood in your urine and that's not very good, not very good at all, so don't hit them. You cannot tense this part of the body, you can tense here, tense the sides, tense your back, but you can't really protect yourself with muscles in this area where the kidneys are located. So I try and hit higher, just out of respect for um, you can. So be careful when you're hitting. Ready? So get your line, get your distance, look for the movements. Cover. Now, this is uh, what I specifically talking about earlier. If the if Kerry comes up too close to do the can't actually get the socket on it. So he has to do sugi. Yeah? Sugi to get the distance. So then cover. Cover bring it back. Okay. I can actually, if I number six, it's the other, it's the other foot, I can't sleep because the foot's in the way. So therefore, the difference between number two, number six. One, two, one, two, one, two. 
Then you're using your, your muscles, your internal. Come on. Just come back. Come back, load up. In. So I've loaded it. Relaxing it, loading it. Relaxing it. Trying to get your internal to work. When you strike, obviously here, high top. Gotta be nasty. You're gonna come in. But uh, here. Can't feel. Okay, when you're doing the Yuki, try not to give the second attack away. If you remember, um, Kelly was talking about uh, in, the, in the Ipon Pondi, where you try not to give it away, like pulling, pulling the fist back. Yeah? Punch. Try not to do this. Bringing your arm back. Try and leave your arm and let your hip get the position. You'll have to forgive me for not doing soccer time. It's my hip. Why get here okay? She here okay? Why okay. well, she get it? Mm, soccer time. Mm. Not good. Okay, so, uh, so Kelly will come on and demonstrate. Try and leave your arm. Don't tell him that you're moving. Changing. Tack. So, as, uh, since I just mentioned, not giving the game away by moving this arm, try to stay on your distance by moving your hip and minimising this movement as much as possible. And as we discussed uh, at the beginning of the video, is the amount the back foot needs to move is dependent on how far the opponent is away. If the opponent hasn't moved very far at all, you may even end up kicking on the spot. If they're a little bit further away, use the hip and adjust. Try to minimise the movement at all with this arm. So again, try to minimise the movement with this arm. Use your hip to stay on distance. Move the back foot only the amount you need to make the kick. So, uh, from UK's point of view, during uh, King on number two behind me, um, again, from your first attack, you shouldn't be failing any hard blocking action. It should be a smooth, 
suri rubbing action. It's not a hard block. And hopefully if you're trying to help your partner, you can point out if you suddenly start to feel hard movement. Also check that they're turning the head. It's not just the hand. Make sure the head's turning. So no hard physical contact in the first movement. Um, again, adjust your back foot position to the distance you require for your soccer toe. No point in bringing your back foot up if you're already too close. Uh, and you know, if they're coming a little bit low and start hitting the kidneys and you're going to be doing this four, five, ten times, just ask them to raise it up a little bit. It's a powerful technique. Um, even coming up into the back where you've got some muscle you can try and contract. It's still a powerful technique. So hopefully these little bits will help you to help yourself and help your partner. Okay, your tate station. Where does it come from? If you can think of your my hand stance. So your feet pointing into a theoretical third point. So it's a it's a triangle. And to make sure you've got the right length, if you drop this knee, you'll have to bear with me because my hip is still here. So uh, you drop the knee. And you should have one to one and a half fists gap. So that's where you stand for your nine hatch. For your yoko station, you move round. So think of it as working around a quadrant, the same length. Okay, so here you have your heels and toes central. So for your station kata. Yeah. Tate, which you need in your station stata kata is uh, again heels toe on the same line so it's the same length coming back yoko you're my hunch yoko tate My hands. So I'm trying to give that quadrant with the same length. When you're taking your stance, make sure you're thinking of sword, fist. When you tuck, make sure that this one is covering your solar plexus all the time. Even if you change direction, make sure that this is covering. All the time, cover your solar plexus. Not um, here. Here, could be a solvent. 